So, uh, in addition to questions, we love fielding questions. What do you want? What do we want to hear about, Matt Forbes? Deals, baby, deals. Deals, the numbers. Baby. Yeah, we want to know the numbers. So, any of you who've done deals this week, uh, throw out throw out the numbers, or just just uh, we want it. We want to you to share your success with us because yes. it fuels the fire of the land geek. Indeed. Hive mind. In hive mind. I'm not sure I, I like the hive mind. Uh, <laughs> you know, the only thing I remember watching this really cool, um, and I don't know if it's a DC comics, but Arrow. You watch the Arrow, and they talk about hive in there, and I think it's like an evil connotation. Hive. Oh. I got crap after last week's episode because my wife was like, you don't know, we've never heard hive mind. I'm like, no, I don't. I, don't yes! even know what I still don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, since first of all, since when do you ever watch Nightcap? A and B. Hi, Anne Marie. Because, we know you're watching. It's because Anne Marie and I vox so much. She, oh, well, we pick sense. these things up yeah. from each other. So that makes sense. It's good. <laughs> it makes sense. Kim Gibson so, is we, here. Hi, Kim. How are you? Nice to see you. Uh, comments uh, from someone saying flight school and Scott's Scott Todd's accounting course are going awesome. Wow, you're in flight school and the accounting course at the same time. Somebody's taking action. Yeah, awesome. yeah, that's highly recommended. I waited like two years before I took the accounting course. Don't, don't, don't do that. It's a bad call. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Uh, why Forbes? Why, why not wait to take the accounting for land investors class by Scott Tapp? Ah. Because your business is a complete shipwreck financially if you wait. Well, you know, Matt, good point, though. And what I think people don't realize is how quickly this business can ramp up. So you start yes. out, you're like, hey, I just got a deal. You know, it, what it am doesn't I doesn't matter. Why do I need geek pay? Why do I need an accounting course? I got oh. like two properties, uh, Matt. Like, why, you know, Scott, do I really need that? But the thing is, what happens overnight? It, you consistently mail and the deals pile up. Then you yeah. start getting the sales. Maybe it's a little slow. I know some of you out there uh, in the beginning struggle with the sales. But once it happens, it's off to the races. And then you're like, oh, my God, yeah. what do I do now? But if, if you built it like, it, you know, with like this solid foundation, it can grow. And, and I think I, that's I, probably I, what you're talking about. Dude, I wish I had, honestly, because I had no idea. We had our accountant last year. And he, like, at the goal line, did everything that needed to get done, taxes, all that, right? And then I was like, yeah, so, well, I'll have you teach me how to do this. I'll finally do this. I'm not going to do it ever. Literally, I'm never going to do it. It sounds good to want to do it, though. Doesn't it feel good? Like, yeah, I want to get into that. I'm going to take the accounting yeah. course. I'm going to do like, it all. Boom. Who's the man? Listen, it's, a, it's absolutely a shipwreck. And I love Excel, and I love... All I like, I love all that stuff, and I, I, I refuse to do it. We finally, it took our bookkeeper three and a half months to undo the damage that was done. Yeah. Right. Uh, now she's really good, um, and our accountant finally was like, "Yeah, this is, you know, this is perfect." But the one thing that I didn't have, as I, you know, as I finally got this business going, was I never really knew. I was like, well, how much money are we making? I'm like, I don't really know. Like, I'm making enough to pay to buy the next property. <laughs> yeah. And that's how we ran it. And he showed me the QuickBooks numbers. And I'm like, well, these aren't right. I'm like, we didn't do, you know, over 800 grand worth of sales. And he's like, yeah, you did. It's right there. He's Whoa. like, well, what do you mean you didn't do it? I'm like, well, huh? He's like, yeah, you have X numbers of hundreds of thousands of dollars that's owed to you. He's like, you. He's like, are you? Do you not realize you have a real business? I'm like, I don't think I do because I have, you know, eight dollars and forty seven cents in my account. <laughs> he's like, oh god. He's like, you're so painful. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but that's if I had known this all the way along, I think it would have helped keep me going. Uh, you know, which is a good point too, because people often ask about um, people who can help you with the books, and I think one of the biggest things, one of the, one quality you want with them is uh, communication and uh, in constant um, checking in. You don't want to have it where it's the end of the year and it's like, okay, we need oh. you to tell us about all these expenses, like what happened back in March. 
Oh my uh, God, you will not know. Like literally, if you're yeah. new and you haven't done a couple so of So you deals, got like $10,000 that came in here, 8000 here, and 6000 there. You don't know. What was that from? I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> Matt, you made $24,000 right there. What was that from? I've no, Chris, I've no, I have no it's idea. It's ridiculous to say, but stick around this business long enough and you'll realize yeah. that those things pile on top of each other. And that's a good thing. I love what Mark always says new problems, good problems, right? It's not a bad problem to have to figure out how the heck you brought in $24,000 in a month or, or in a, a week or whatever it might be. That's, but it still is a problem. You got to solve it. No, but it's, it's not a bad problem. It's a good problem, but it is still a problem. And you can't go back. Like the problem is, you get busy. And so you're like, yeah, whatever, accounting. What do I care? I'm selling land. This is awesome. And then one day you're like, holy God, I have a, a buddy in the business and they're all over this. It's tight. Like when I grow up, I want to be, you know, this person. Right. And um, he's like, yeah, I, you know, he, he, um, he doesn't use a lob. I forget who he uses to mail, but he's like, yeah, I sent him a check for like almost $10,000 in December. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, I just, he's like, I was going to have to pay taxes on all that. So I just pre-did it and, you know, I ended just with a credit and I'm going to mail over the next couple of months. Nice. And I'm like, oh, so you're so ahead of it. You get to make informed decisions. Yeah. I'm like, wow, that's a thing. That's really cool. <laughs> that's a that's thing. Good I know. stuff right there. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's awesome. Listen, the yeah, reality so is there's a way this business works, right? I mean, sorry, Scott, okay, but like the flight okay. school, the format, when we first started, um, some of us, there was no flight school. It was just like there was you get good at land investing and there's nothing wrong with that. But the flight school brought a format and a structure that allowed you to really scale. I mean, don't get me wrong. Before the flight school, we were still taught how to make a ton of money, a ton of money buying and selling land. But what Scott did is, uh, with the flight school is built this sort of – it really is a recipe. And I can tell you because for a while, because I didn't go – there was no flight school when I started, right? So then hanging around with Scott and finally he's talking about these different things and, and then realizing that, yeah, there is a better way to structure this business and that's what he teaches and it allows yeah. for this growth we're talking about. 